Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus, joining you for another teaching and learning session. This time around, we're going to talk about our next generation NCLEX RN pointers, set number 43. But before that, I'd like to ask for your cooperation. Please join us in this mission. We've been doing this for the past two years and we've been quite successful providing opportunities for nurses in the countryside here in the Philippines. So our goal is to provide free NCLEX RN application and review to 100 nurses. And to help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. Please don't skip. And thank you for doing that for this goal. Thank you so much in advance. So on to our next generation NCLEX RN pointer set number 43. So the first thing that you have to ask yourself when you're preparing for the next generation NCLEX is, what do I need to study? And of course, you need an expert opinion on that matter. So which simply means that it will not help if you just simply ask a friend or a coworker or a classmate to give you a feedback on what they saw on their test and then focus on those things and just study those things. It will not work that way. Remember, the NCLEX RN is computer generated. The questions are computer generated and so therefore there's a lesser probability that you're going to meet the same set of questions. So stop doing that. That's a recipe for failure. So the first thing that I'd like to share with you today is actually about hypovolemic shock. So this is a life-threatening condition and therefore it is a medical emergency. So the main problem here is a very severe blood or fluid loss and this makes the heart unable to pump enough or adequate amount of blood to supply the body's needs. So when you say hypovolemic shock, this could very well be related to bleeding or burns or a patient could be having severe diarrhea or even pancreatitis. Now, how do we know that the client is developing hypovolemic shock? It's primarily through the monitoring of vital signs. So you will notice that there will be very low blood pressure and increased heart rate. So if you note those two, then you could very well think of hypovolemic shock. So remember, there's going to be low blood pressure and then high pulse rate. And definitely, there's going to be low temperature and high respiratory rate. So remember, pay particular attention to the fact that your client could be having hypo taki taki hypotension tachycardia tachypnea and definitely low temperature so the priority intervention should be to place the client on a position in which you will be able to facilitate the distribution of blood and fluids into the body and so that would mean that you have to place the client on a position in which the body should be flat and the lower extremities could be slightly elevated. Now, the priority intervention after putting the patient in the right position is to administer crystalloid fluids or pay particular attention to this fact. Colloid fluids are less likely to be used. Why? Because this could potentially induce allergic reaction and blood clotting disorders as well as kidney failure. So the most important thing that you have to remember is you need to prepare your isotonic crystalloid solutions. And take note, you don't give the client uh, with hypovolemic shock your antihypertensives or vasodilators. This would definitely worsen the client's condition. So for patients with um, dehydration, but they have adequate circulatory volume, your hypotonic solutions are used. This could be either 5% dextrose solution or 0.45% saline solution. So pay particular attention to these things. Remember for hypovolemic shock, position and fluids would be the key. Now, before we proceed any further, let me share with you the good story from Ms. Elma Bauto. And she says, I wanted to extend my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for your invaluable support and guidance on my journey to passing the NCLEX. Like, special thanks to Ray, Mamche, and all the mentors who have been instrumental in my success. Your dedication and experience, expertise have truly made a difference. Thank you very much, Elma, for those very, very kind words. 
our pleasure to have serve you at our best. Okay, being a Gapus baby from my NLE, wow. So you you are a certified certified Gapus baby, and so therefore you should be given a medal <laughs> for your loyalty. NLE to NCLEX fills me with immense pride, and I'm forever grateful for the solid foundation and unwavering support I receive from the RAGRS. Your commitment to excellence sets you apart, and I'm privileged to have been part of such an exceptional learning community. Once again, we know we don't deserve all these praises, but thank you so much for appreciating what we do. A special shout out to Mom Che for coming to my rescue just in time. Your vigilance and care are greatly appreciated. Thank you once again for everything. RAGRS is indeed the best, and I'm I'm proud to be a part of it. Good morning, Pusser, and thank you so much. And then I asked what helped her the most, and she says, Napaking, napakalaking tulong ma, mo po ng mga lectures natin. Functional concepts, panalo po. So she's simply saying that the lectures help her the most, and I asked her, uh, very, very complete. It's very, very complete. And she says, hindi po ako nagkamali na maging gapos maybe forever. So, She's just sharing to us that for her, it's never a mistake to be a Gapus baby. And she says, magagaling po ang mga mentors natin. So she appre appreciates all our mentors are all good, but you're still the best. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The mentors reflect the values we have in the company. Today, March 16, 2024 is your lucky day. That's when she received her results. And I'm so proud to say I'm one of those very few people whom she sent a message to to say thank you. And for that, Elma, God bless you more. Okay, now let's move on to the second NCREX RN alert concept that I'd like to highlight. This is your nortriptyline. Uh, the brand name is actually Aventil or Pamelor. Now, this drug is a tricyclic antidepressant. Now, pay particular attention to the fact that your antidepressants are not rapid acting. So initially, the therapeutic effects could come in after two to three weeks, and the full therapeutic effects could actually be evident after three to four weeks. So if the patient is just taking the drug for at least a week, and they're saying that they're not feeling any difference at all, all you have to do is to reinforce to the client that they may need to wait a little bit more because it takes time for the drug to exert its therapeutic effects. And how would you know that the drug is indeed exerting therapeutic effects? Two things to consider. One would be you have to check the client's appetite. So if they're asking for additional snacks, that simply means that the medication is now exerting its therapeutic effects. And second would be improved sleep. Now, Caution, though, that if they, if they are sleeping at daytime or they're having like 10 to 12 hours of sleep, that could be indicative of hypersomnia. The normal duration of sleep should only be seven to eight hours, okay? So off-level usage of your nortriptyline would be, it is used to decrease neuropathic pain, especially if your patient could be having um, herpes zoster or um, if they are having other types of neuropathic pain induced by other conditions. And of course, it could also be used to facilitate or um, treat the client in order for them to quit smoking. Now, when your patient's taking nortriptyline, it's very important that you assess whether they're taking other types of antidepressants, especially for those who are taking herbal antidepressants. Now, tell them that they should not combine St. John's wort, that's an herbal antidepressant, with your nortriptyline. Or if they're also taking medications for migraine headaches, like sumatriptan, frovatriptan, elitriptan, they should not also be combining these medications with nortriptyline as the adverse effects could actually be more severe. Okay, now when is the best time to take your antidepressant? So ideally, in order to decrease drowsiness, so the antidepressant must be taken um, an hour before bedtime, or in order to improve its effectiveness, it could be given with vitamin B6 um, in order for the, the medication um, for its therapeutic effects to be improved. Now, what about if you are given a choice of which food or food groups could be high in vitamin B6. Now, pay particular attention to the fact that your vitamin B6 rich foods could also be your protein rich foods. So it's all right to administer the medication with adequate amounts of 
protein. Now, what are the important things that you have to tell your patient before they are to take nortriptyline? First, assess if your patient has glaucoma. Why? Nortriptyline can potentially worsen increased intraocular pressure intraocular pressure because it causes pupillary dilatation. So it's not given to clients with glaucoma. And of course, if your client has type 1 or type 2 diabetes, your nortriptyline could also potentially alter the sugar levels. It's also very important to note that your tricyclic antidepressants can potentially trigger palpitation. So it's important that you check the client's ECG tracing for any abnormal heart rhythms before you administer the medication. So once again, take out nortriptyline. Okay. Now let me share with you our passers from all over the world. Okay. So remember, we are into this test preparations um, business for 30 years. We started in 1994. I was young back then. <laughs> And we started with just three students, and two of them are apathetic. So <laughs> without the lone student who would usually laugh with me, I am laughing all to myself. Anyway, one of those pastors is actually a 60-year-old nurse from the Philippine Women's University. We have Jane Janeo Serrano. Okay, and of course, she's joined by a lot of nurses from all over the world. And of course, their number keeps on increasing. Okay. Now, let's pay particular attention now to the next important thing. Now, people preparing for the NGN sometimes would fail to focus on the basic things. And this is where they commit a lot of errors because they've studied all those difficult stuff but have failed to study the basic ones. So let's begin with the concept of suctioning and of course, you have three types of suctioning. You have your nasal suction, definitely nasal suctioning. So that would <clears throat> imply that it would be for the removal of secretions from the nasal passages. So this is suctioning done into the nose. And what suction is usually used, you have your BBG suction. We have a picture here. Okay, your BBG suction is just actually, you don't have to insert it. You just have to place it at the nasal entrance and then sucks in the mucus plug, okay? Primarily, this is done for um, babies, okay? The second one, we have your oral suction. And specifically, if your client has drooling, and when we speak of clients with drooling, you have clients with CVA, clients with impaired cuff reflex, or clients with impaired swallowing or dysphagia. So clients having a Parkinson's disease or clients with drooling because of multiple sclerosis, then we use your young cower suction, okay? You have here a very rigid suction tip that is used to suction the mouth in clients with drooling. Now, your young cower suction can be delegated. The responsibility of the RN is primarily just to assess the client and then document the uh, implementation of the procedure. But young cower suctioning in a drooling client who's stable can definitely be delegated. And of course, you have your nasopharyngeal suction. Okay, so this is done through the throat. Okay. And there are certain things that we have to remember, whether you're doing your BBG suction or you're using your NP suction or Yang Cower suction. First and foremost, we have to remember that we don't suction clients with head and neck surgeries because of the potential of harming them more. And when we are performing suctioning, we use clean technique. Okay. And then we need to avoid stimulating the gag reflex, which could potentially lead to bradycardia. And we position the client on semi flowers with the head turned to the side. And we need to apply the suction for adults for 10 to 15 seconds, followed by 30 minute to one minute interval for rest. So pay particular attention to the fact that applying suction should not be continuous. It has to be done intermittently. And before and after suctioning, we need to hyper-oxygenate the client with 100% oxygen. Now, before we perform suctioning, what are the baseline data that we need to focus on? First, we need to check the client's oxygen saturation and the calf reflex. And of course, we have to ensure that the amount of suction is adequate. So for example, 
For a wall suction, it has to be between 100 and 150 millimeters mercury. And for portable suction, it has to be between 10 to 15 millimeters mercury. So pay particular attention to this fact. Never, ever forget the basic concepts when preparing for your NGN. And then even if you possess the knowledge, if you don't know how to navigate test questions using the right technology, everything becomes useless. So you have to learn with the right technology. And at the Regapo system, we have technological tools that are designed to enhance learning and teaching from across all generations. That's why we are producing passers from the very young Gen Z generations, even from the post baby boomers. Okay. So I asked one passer, which part of our review helped you the most? And Elma Bauta says, all of it, sir. Ginawa ko po yung sinabi nyo na a day before my exam, basahin ng 311. So she read the book NCLEX 311 before she took the test. And dinala ko po dito sa Las Vegas ang books nyo. Okay? So she brought the book to Las Vegas where she is based. Okay? Now this is actually the quick fix course shells that are available at the Regapo system. For those of you who may want to study at their own pace, anytime, anywhere, this is the learning management system for you. And of course, it is also very, very important that when you're studying, you are in a conducive environment. And when we say conducive environment, your classroom should be with the right size and you have to be in a simulation room. So we're the only system that has our own simulators for the next generation NPLEX RN. So if you want to try and join our programs, join our next generation NPLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test preparation class for the next gen, your choice of live face-to-face -face class, live virtual class, on-demand limited video recorded lessons, QBank and three books, NGN strategies and sample questions with me. And of course, the quick fix session. The fee starts at 3499 including my three books plus the quick fix session. So if you want to try, join our NCLEX camp. So once again, this is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gapus, joining you for this teaching and learning session. And I'll see you back in my next video. Take care.